I'm immediately now going to go to example number two. I hope you guys all have it in front of you. And I very much want us to look at our question quickly. I have example number two here. It says, sin theta is negative 3 over 5. And cos is negative 8 over 17. And alpha and beta is between negative 90 and 180 and we have to go and calculate the values of all of that I'm going to start with a sketch I'm going to try and go slower now the sin of alpha is negative 3 over 5 we just did that can we draw that sketch everybody draw your y-axis for me draw your x-axis sin is negative that negative indicates to me that we must work in which quadrants? I know you have the answer already. Sin is negative in the third or in the fourth quadrant. So you have to sketch either here or there. How do you know where to sketch? Remember they said alpha is an element from negative 90 to 180 degrees. Okay. Look at that, everybody. If you don't have the question, I'm writing the questions down for you. Sin is negative 3 over 5. And alpha is between negative 90 and 180. Can we work this out together? Either here or there. All right. Negative 90. We know the angle goes from here. Negative. It's 0 to negative 90. There's 0 to, uh, 0 to 90. 90 to 180. Grade 12. You cannot go to this quadrant. You are restricted to stop. At 180. So your sketch, I started by saying sin is either in the third or in the fourth quadrant. Can't go there. You cannot go there because you stop at 180. So you are going to go and draw your sketch in the fourth quadrant. I hope you all got that. If you don't understand it, just send through a question. Then I can just explain it again. Your alpha goes right around. That is alpha, everybody. We just said sin is our opposite. So the negative 3 goes there over the hypotenuse. And we are going to use and we are going to use Pythagoras again. This is going to be 4. Remember 3, 4 and 5 always goes down as the same triangle. It can't be in the third quadrant. I got a few way telling me that it's in the third quadrant. We cannot go and draw it in the third quadrant of Fiwe because you were restricted to 180 angles here is between 180 and 270. They said work from negative 90 to 180. So your sketch is going to be in the fourth quadrant. And we worked out number four. We worked out four as the adjacent side. That is my first sketch. My second sketch, I'm going to just do that. They told us that the cos of beta is equal to negative 8 over 17. Okay, let's go draw that. Negative 8 over 17. I'm going to draw my y axis. I'm going to draw my x axis again. And come, we see if you understand it a little bit better. Cos is negative. Cos is negative where? Cos is negative in the second and in the third quadrant. So you can either draw your sketch in the second or in the third quadrant. Once again, we cannot go to the third quadrant. Why can't we go to the third quadrant? Grade 12, they restricted us. They said it must be smaller than 180. Angles here are between 180 and 270. So you cannot go and draw your sketch in the third quadrant. So I'm definitely going to draw my sketch in the second quadrant. So I've got the second quadrant there. And we have the cos of beta. We've got the second quadrant. What is cos? Adjacent over the hypotenuse. My adjacent is that. And my hypotenuse is 17. Okay. Now you need to work out your opposite side. What are we going to use for that? We're going to use Pythagoras. I'm just looking here that Pumlani, you're asking me, where did you get the 4 
and the four I said we use Pythagoras. Now, if you didn't understand that Pythagoras, let's see if you're going to understand how I use Pythagoras to find out the opposite side here. Okay, so I'm going to say hypotenuse squared is equal to the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared. We know that is Pythagoras' theorem. And we have, I have the hypotenuse. What is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is 17. So I've got 17 squared is equal to, what's the value of my opposite side? I don't have it. So I'm going to write opposite. What is the adjacent? Negative 8. Remember, this is the negative x-axis. So that is negative 8. Okay, I want you to send through your answers as to what you got for the opposite side. What did you get when you worked out the opposite side? Calvin, you already said it's 15. That is absolutely, you are faster than what I am. I had Christopher telling me, ma'am, the, the sketch is going to be in the second quadrant and that is lovely. And then I have somebody saying, how do we know that negative 90 is on the fourth quadrant? Okay, remember negative angles are measured in a clockwise direction. So you're going to go from naught to negative 90 here, negative 90 to negative 180 here. So that is why we know it lies in the fourth quadrant. From the fourth, you move negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and so on. I'm getting quite a lot of people telling me, ma'am, the opposite side is 15. I am so proud of you. Well done to Temba, Namdifa, and Pamela. That was good. It is 15. We have our two sketches. I've got my two sketches. That's my first sketch. That is my second sketch. And I am now ready to go look at the questions. The pupils who don't have the questions, don't worry. I'm going to write the question down for you. The first question that they asked us was, what is sin alpha plus beta? Sin alpha plus beta. I want you to go to your formula sheet again. On your formula sheet, there is a sin alpha plus beta. You need to expand it. Just go write the formula down. Sin alpha plus beta, I want you all to write it with me, is the sin of alpha, the cos of beta plus the cos of alpha, the sin of beta. They give it to you on your formula sheet. And do you know what? You get it on your formula sheet and you get a mark for that. Why do you want to lose that mark? Sin alpha, cos beta, cos alpha, sin beta. Now, where must I get sin alpha from? Where must I get cos beta from? Where must I get cos alpha from? And where must I get sin beta from? You must go get it from your sketches that we drew. I'm going to do the first part with you. Then you're going to fill in the second part yourself. Sin alpha, you go to the alpha sketch. You go to the sketch where you had the alpha angle. Sin, right, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. You fall in negative 3 over 5. Now you want to know what is the cos of beta. The cos of beta, I cannot go to this sketch now. I'm going to go to my second sketch where I have the beta angle. And remember, cos is adjacent over the high hypotenuse. Grade 12, I want you to go fill in the cos ratio for me there and I want you to fill in the sin ratio and while you're filling that in, let me see if I have any questions. You're going to fill in that yourself. Right, somebody asking me, ma'am, why are you not putting in the right angle? Everybody, that's perfect. We can put in the right angle. We know that the right angle is going to be there. That's good. Um, why is the 15 positive? Remember, the 15 is positive. Let me see who asked. Say, well, P, where you asked, why is that 15 positive? Remember, this is on the positive Y axis. This is positive Y values. And somebody asked me, why do we double up? Why do we double up? Because this is the formula on your formula sheet. I hope that everybody filled in cos alpha. Now I'm going to fill it in and see if you got this right. The cos of alpha, which sketch do I go to? Do I go to the beta sketch or the alpha sketch? We go to the alpha sketch. 
the cos of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse and the sin of beta will be 15 over 17. I hope you all filled it in. Send through your answers for me quickly. Tell me what you got for that. I'm going to give you the opportunity just to tell me what you got for your answer. And you can either send it in, in fraction form or you can send it in decimal form. Look, I know you already have the answer. Here's the answer, ma'am. 84 over 85. You are absolutely correct. 84 over 85. I'm so proud of you. That was brilliant. You filled it in quickly and you got to the answer. Okay. Our next question that they asked us was to go and find the tan of alpha plus beta. Grade 12, this was quite tough because you don't have a tan alpha plus beta on your formula sheet. So you need to actually go and write tan alpha plus beta as what we just did one like that. It is the sin of alpha plus beta divided by the cos of alpha plus beta. Right? That is the sin of alpha plus beta over the cos of alpha plus beta. Now once again, just think with me. We don't need to go work out what is sin alpha plus beta. Why don't we have to go and work out what is sin alpha plus beta? Because we worked it out in our previous question. Our previous question, we got the sin of alpha plus beta to be 84 over 85. So all I am going to do is to substitute the 84 over 85 in the place of sin alpha plus beta. Can you see that learners? You don't have to go work it out again. However, I do not know what cos alpha plus beta is. All of you, you take your formula sheets and you're going to expand the cos of alpha plus beta. I'm going to expand it with you because there's one part that you must just be careful. I'm going to take my red cokey, the cos alpha plus beta. Please go and expand that for me. It is cos alpha cos beta. Here comes my other color pen. Why do I have a different color? Because of instead of saying plus, it is minus. It is not plus, it is minus. And then if we expand it further, it is sin alpha, sin beta. And you've got what the sin of alpha plus beta is. It's 84 over 85. I want every single learner looking at this broadcast to now go and fill in. Please take your sketches and go fill in what is cos alpha to the alpha sketch. What is cos beta? Fill in that ratio. What is sin alpha? Fill in that ratio. And what is sin beta? Fill in that ratio. I'm going to give you about one or two minutes to fill in the ratios. And then after you filled in the ratios and while you're filling it in, let me see if anybody is struggling with this question. Somebody says, ma'am, can you please slow down, please? It is Nubisa. Nubisa, I'm trying my best to slow down, but we have so many questions to get through. I'm going to try and just ask you to fill in the cause of alpha, the cause of beta, the sin of alpha and the sin of beta slowly. And somebody asked me by the first question, don't you go further and divide 84 by 85? Remember the first question? No problem. Leave it as 84 over 85. Right. And we've got what is cos alpha? I know you filled it in already, the cos of alpha. I'm just going to try and bring my sketch in here. I can get it. And the cos of alpha is 4 over 5. Fill it in, everybody. And the cos of beta, I go to this sketch again, is negative 8 over 17. Minus, what is the sin of alpha? Go back to the alpha sketch. It is negative 3 over 5. And the sin of beta, go to the sketch, the beta sketch, 15 over 17. And there you have all your ratios. And all that requires for you to do is to work this out 
on your calculator. I have somebody saying, ma'am, I have the answer already. And the answer at the bottom that is amazing is 13 over 85. That's 84 over 85 divided by this entire line here. If you type it on your calculator, you are going to get 13 over 85. I just want to say that there is somebody that Tam Tamsin, you also wrote there 13 over 85. Look, I know, sorry, you wrote 13 over 85. That was lovely. Somebody's asking me, ma'am, why the minus sign? Just go look at the minus again. It's negative 3 over 5 because this is my negative y axis. Why the negative 8 again? This is my negative x axis. And you know what, everybody, Annalisa, I'm so proud of you. You wrote the answer as 84 over 13, and that is 100% correct. Well done, Annalisa. Nancy, why do you make positive sign to become negative? Why do we make the positive signs to become a negative? Remember, once again, don't get confused with your signs. Just check negative x-axis negative y-axis. That negative times the negative gave me a positive. So I've got the 13 over 85 and that is amazing. And I've got 84 over 13 as my final answer. Well done to the students who got this. This was example number two and I'm very proud of those students who got it. We just did the sketches now and I hope that you understand it the students who are battling with the signs, just remember, I'm just going to do this just quickly before I go to example number two. If you put down a value here, it's going to be plus. If I put a value down there, it is going to be plus. If I put a value down here, you're going to have a negative. And if I put a value down here, it is negative. This is your Cartesian plane. So any x value here will be negative. Any y value will be negative. Any x positive, any y value positive.